originally referred to simply and ominously as The Company, and later revealed as Wayland yutani this one corporation within the Alien universe seems to be pulling all the strings, and making life increasingly difficult for those unfortunate souls who happen to make contact with the Xenomorph species, all in the name of obtaining a specimen for their bioweapons division. But how much power does Wayland yutani actually have, and how much of a monopoly does this company have over the United Systems? Records would indicate it to be a great deal, with technologies and locations surrounding the everyday life of this universe's inhabitants all owned by Wayland yutani The Wayland yutani Report, a company resource, outlines a great deal of the company's achievements, tracing the origins to the company's founder, Sir Peter Wayland, and its excerpts of course paint a saintly, if not godly, portrait of the man. The report goes on to explain, There have been numerous biographies about the life and work of Sir Peter Wayland, easily the greatest scientific mind of any generation. There is no question that his personal and professional achievements led to astonishing advancements in engineering, medicine, resource collection and processing, and space travel. While it is not the intent of this report to rehash the life of this great man, any report on interaction with the alien intelligence must include a section on Sir Peter. Not only did he push humanity into space, he designed the ships that took us to new worlds, invented the hypersleep chambers that allowed us to reach those worlds, and created the atmospheric processors that made those worlds viable for human colonization. True to its slogan, Wayland has been building better worlds since the very beginning. In 2025, Wayland's lifelong interest in cybernetics led to the introduction of David, the first artificial person. Wayland's patents and notes left behind after his death led to further innovations in the field with many fruitful years enjoyed by the company. That is, until the expiry of such patents and further competition that led to the disastrous Auton recall in 2379. Considering the current state of the AP market, Sir Peter's cybernetic dream has perhaps been taken as far as it can go. His own, quote, son, David, was, although rudimentary by modern standards, perhaps the best and brightest of them all, as he represented an avatar of possibilities. A man created by man, effectively, as Sir Peter himself said in his controversial 2023 presentation to shareholders, turning men into gods. Developing artificial intelligence would be considered an achievement worthy of several lifetimes, though it would only amount to a fraction of Wayland's innovations. His work in atmospheric processing changed the course of the universe and opened up limitless possibilities. Wayland's prototype atmospheric processor effectively ended global warming on Earth when he was only 26 years old. The invention also earned Sir Peter his first Nobel Prize and a knighthood. He received his second Nobel Prize in 2023 for vitally important cancer research. What began as a study of organic aerosols led Sir Peter to his breakthrough regarding the radiative balance of tropospheric creation. It would be another 23 years before the first breathable atmosphere was created on an extrasolar world by one of Sir Peter's processors. The, quote, shake-and-bake colonies engineered by Wayland yutani Corporation nearly a century later, while streamlined and mostly automated, used the same chemical model that the Wayland Corporation patented in 2015. The hypersleep chambers used with great regularity within the universe can also be credited to Wayland. Patented in 2030, cryostatus chambers allowed humans to travel into deep space for much longer periods by placing them in a slow-wave sleep state. The first chambers combined flash refrigeration with the standard chemical drip and required hardline muscle stimulators and ECMO lung-slash-heart support. Advances in chemistry and field conduction allowed later models to dispense without much of the hardware and the cold, although hypersleep is still often referred to as cryo. Though not literally in stasis, the aging of the body is negligible, as cell replacement is effectively halted. Third generation design hypersleep chambers housed the crew of the Prometheus on their two plus year journey to LV-223 from 2091 to 2093. Working with the already established concepts of time dilation and closing speeds, Wayland Corporation scientists published the mathematical equations for FTL, faster than light travel, in 2032. Prototypes are being tested by company engineers within two years. Recognizing the importance of rapid progress, Sir Peter devoted substantial resources to the development of a practical ship's drive. Within 50 years, the drive would allow Sir Peter himself to travel to LV-223 in his personally outfitted exploration vehicle, the USCSS Prometheus. Another innovation, the Alpha Reader, allowed the wearer to, quote, see dream images. Neural oscillations during alpha delta low wave sleep as interpreted by a computer. A prototype alpha communicator was created shortly thereafter, which allowed an interchange between reader and subject, but the prototype was lost in 2093. 
When asked to explain the decision not to market the device commercially, Sir Peter was said to comment that a man should have the privacy, at least, of his own dreams. Sir Peter Whelan's interest in medical engineering reached its fruition in the self-contained diagnosis and treatment medical surgical unit, familiarly known as the MedPod. Classified as Pauling Series 720i after co-designer A. Pauling. Approved by the FDA in 2070, the pods were programmed to perform a wide array of invasive medical procedures, from cesarean section to cardiac bypass surgery. A brilliantly designed sensor array automatically adjusted to each patient, allowing for diagnosis, anesthetization, and precision surgery in a self-sterilizing environment. Not only did Sir Peter understand that humanity's future was in the stars, he created, directly or indirectly, the mechanisms and processes that would make such travel both possible and productive. His own final deep space voyage employed a number of Wayland Corporation's innovations, the first EVA suits boasting full vital reads and self-regulation environmental adapters, ascent-descent capable multi-terrain vehicles with gravity adaptive capability, independent mapping pups, and, of course, the Prometheus herself. While records regarding Wayland yutani are still being uncovered and brought into light, and more is revealed about the company every day, it's clear that Wayland yutani has a firm hold on all of the inhabitants of the alien universe. What began as a mysterious, evil corporation in the shadows has quickly become an increasingly integral element to the universe. Do you think Wayland yutani is indeed your run-of-the-mill evil company, or do you feel they're misunderstood innovators? Comment below and let me know what you think. And as always, thank you very much for watching, I really appreciate it, and if you like this video, please be sure to give it a like, and you can also hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with all the latest from Alien Theory. If there's a topic you'd like to see covered, I'd love to hear your suggestion below, and you can also follow Alien underscore Theory on Twitter and Alien Theory YT on Facebook for more, and until next time, this is Alien Theory. Signing off.